Nick. We're right here, and I have one of my favorite senators right here with me, Floyd Nicholson. How you doing today, Senator Floyd Nicholson? I'm doing good on this beautiful Monday after Easter morning. It's a little dreary, but it's a beautiful day, and I'm just delighted to be with you again this morning. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you here, Floyd. You know, the um, what was it, yesterday over there at Ryan's, they'd had a bump up, I think, in the parking lot. They had one of the fire trucks come for this, and um, I happened to walk by, because we were going to Ryan's, I walked by, and I saw the truck, and it said, it said, Mayor Floyd Nicholson, this was a fire truck from when y'all were there, and city manager Steve Brown, there's a plaque on the side of the fire truck, and I was thinking, I'm going to have Senator Floyd Nicholson with me, but uh, for all the years that you were mayor here, how about that? Well, thank you. That that truck was probably one that was purchased while I was mayor and Steve Brown, you know, and they just put the plaque on the side right. of it then, you know. Yeah, right and they right. had all the members of, of uh, city, city council. council. Right, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a nice remembrance to see that and remember who was who back back in the day. It is good to see some positive things instead of always hearing about the negative things, you know. Yeah, we are. We <laughs> yeah. are. It well, is. thank you. That yeah. made my day. Oh, come on now. But... Uh, you know, at, gosh, and there's been some uh, good news about Greenwood Uptown and everything is, of course, growing and doing well. And, of course, for those of us on the bypass, we would like to see a little action out here on the bypass, although we've got new businesses coming here. But uh, it, it would be nice to see uh, a few more things done, but uh, that's not your job, I guess, exactly. Your job is to make sure that... Uh, we get good things happening down there in Columbia that flow back up here to Greenwood. One of the things that I did hear that I was kind of surprised is mm -hmm. that the uh, the garbage discussion, right, about uh, you were asked to make sure that uh, we try to keep, uh, when you were going to uh, county council, had their meeting, they wanted to make sure that garbage stayed within <laughs> within the county, but that didn't pass down there, did it? Well, you're talking about the flow control right. bill and everything, you know, and my whole contention with that, it's a local issue. Local county councils should have the authority to decide how they're going to uh, manage their garbage, you know, whether they want to have an outside contractor come in or they want to do it because, you know, just like here in Greenwood, they've invested a lot of money in that landfill and the recycling program out there. Sure. So, you know, it should be their decision how they are going to handle the garbage in their county, whether they are going to work together because you have some counties that are working together, you know, with landfill. So it's a local issue. Let the local people decide how they're going to do it instead of, because, you know, when they built these landfills and everything, state did not put money in there to assist them and everything. It's no sure. state money in there. It's all local funds. So it's a local issue that the local county councils and delegates should decide how they're going to handle their garbage. Well, okay, and and could they make a law that says no garbage leaves our county lines? Well, you know, it would be up to the local officials. But I'm saying, could the local yeah, county yeah, do yeah. something uh -huh. like they that? Yeah, and, and tell ordinances and everything, you know, but I think they're going to be looking out for the welfare of the county, what's best for all individuals in the county. Sure. And, of course, local government is the best place to keep things like that. Exactly, because, hey. Every that, time you give the state some power, it seems to get bigger and bigger. Exactly. It really does. But I, I have to hey, that's a local issue. Let them decide how they want to handle their local garbage. Well, you know, I guess all those things come down to price, don't they, Floyd? Yeah, it's all concerned about the cost. And, and the cost for the person dumping the garbage. Right, yeah, the cost there and everything. I think they need to get sit down and work together and see how it's going to be cost effective for everyone and for them to be able to maintain the landfill and the recycling program, you know, the least cost effective way, you know. And I think it just takes working together. It's a cost affiliated with everything, you know. Sure is. But I think they should work, figure out they don't want to put anybody out of business. They need to work with these businesses and everything to try to make it a uh, you know, a win-win situation for everyone. Sure. If you, I guess if you want people to come patronize your place, then I guess you have to make it cost incentive to make them come there, i.e. Right. making it cheaper if that's, that's right. what it takes. That's right. You know, because we know everybody's in business, but it's all around that dollar. And how can I provide the best service at the least expensive way? Sure. So, um... That's just part of business, and I, I think sometimes municipalities, don't they kind of forget 
that they are a business and they need to look at things as a business, not as a regulator? That's right. It's a business. Everything is a business that revolves around the dollar and how can I do it at the best way at the most, especially in these tough economic times and everything. And although we are rebounding, but I don't care whether it's good times or bad times, we still need to look at what's best for the citizens and how it can be the best cost-effective way that we can do certain things. Absolutely. But well, we are here with Senator Floyd Nicholson. Of course, uh, he is, you're on a, uh, on a spring break, aren't you? Yes, we have a <laughs> two-week spring break. You know, we'll go back next Tuesday, which is the ninth, you know, and uh, in a few weeks we'll begin, begin to work on the budget. The House has already passed that version, so we'll start working on the budget you know, when we go back in a few weeks and everything. So it's good to have a little break, but when you have a break, you'll be more busy because you're busy in the community, running around doing various things in the community. Absolutely, and that's a, but that's a, but that gives you an ear as to what people are thinking. Exactly, you need to be out there among the people to talk to them directly to find out what's the issue that they are mainly concerned with, and that can influence how you feel about certain issues and what's best for the people when you decide to vote on certain issues. So, Floyd, what are the things that you are actually hearing from our local constituents, your local constituents here? Well, one of the main ones has been the flow control bill, you know, that has been one of the main. And like always, you know, the budget. How are we going to feel about the budget, you know, the needs of various uh, agencies and everything. And another is Medicaid expansion. What do you think about that, Floyd? You know, growing up here in this community, not having access to health insurance, I think it's important that everyone have access to affordable health care. I think it's so important. We have so many people, you know, and not just people out of work, a lot of working people who don't have health care. So I think if we can uh, provide health care to these individuals, you know, at a cost effective way, it's important. And when the government is going to pay for the first three years 100%, I think we need to have Medicaid expansion to make sure that everyone is covered. You know, presently now when you think about, look, kids, they're covered. But we have adults who work every day mm -hmm. who don't have health care because they cannot afford it, sure. you know. And we need to look at the cost. We know it's very costly. But if we can expand this to include people who don't have health care, we need to do it. Now, the, you brought up an interesting point. The uh, government, the federal government, is going to pay for the first three years. But I think Governor Haley and, and some other people's concern is what happens after those three years, Floyd? Both year they're going to pay 90 percent. Okay. And then I think it drops down to about 80 percent. Okay. Know. We're talking about five years. We don't know the status of our economy at that time, you know. So I think, you know, we need to look at this. It's not going to be 100 percent cost upon the state, you know, at any time. So you feel that we should take the money from the federal government. Yes, yes I do. it's our money. Those are your federal tax dollars that you are paying, right? Right. Okay, if you don't take it, the other states are saying, hallelujah, <laughs> we get more, because they're going to divide it up from us and give it to the other states. Yeah. You know, that's the way I've always felt about entitlement programs, you know, they're our federal dollars, you know, and we need to get whatever we can coming back to the constituents here in our state. I always used to remember what people used to say about Strong Thurman. They said Strong, he might fight against entitlements, but if it passed, he was going to be the first one to back the 18 wheel up to the door and get as much as he could to bring to our state. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. He was there for a long time, too. Yes, wasn't yes. He? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think, you know, it's our federal dollars, and we need to get as much as we can from those programs. So why, why, okay, on the flip side, from your perspective, why is everybody, not everybody, why is the other side saying, no, no, we don't want to do that? Why is Governor Haley against it? Well, I guess she just said she's against entitlement. You know, there's a cost affiliated with it and everything, and we cannot be able to afford this cost. Just like uh, the superintendent of education refused federal dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. you know same thing. I just don't understand. They say, well, it's a one-time deal, then what you going to do? A one-time deal can help a lot of people at that present time that are suffering and everything. Then you but once you start a program, you have to keep funding the program. I mean, what happens when you say, sorry, folks, we can't do it anymore? I'm sure that's where uh, Zace was coming from. Right. You come there, I think you have to look at other terms, you know, figure out other ways to come up to find it, if it's a worthwhile program. 
Sure. You know, I think one thing we really need to look at the waste that is in a lot of programs, money that is being waste. If we can eliminate that, we can find just about everything. Probably. You are yeah. probably right there. Hey, I am here with Senator Floyd Nicholson. We are going to hear a word from our sponsors. If you've got a question for Floyd, don't hesitate to pick up that phone, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. We'll be right back. Right. We're back here at Sharp Passes Gallery on the 72 Bypass. I am here with Senator Floyd Nicholson. We were just talking about uh, Medicaid expansion. Isn't one of the, the issues on the flip side of this, though, if um, doesn't the government have to set up something even if we don't accept the money for our, to set it up ourselves? Isn't that the way that works? Am I quoting that correctly? I think, I think that's correct, Dan. Mm -hmm. So why, why, why would a state agree to set it up saying that the responsibility is going to come back if the, if the federal government will come in and set it up anyways. I think I'm asking the correct question. I think that's correct, and I don't know all the implications <laughs> myself, you know, because like I said, the number of pages and everything, you know, I really don't know. Oh, you know mean it was kind of like Obamacare, so many pages we didn't know what was in it, right? <laughs> Well, just like so many other laws, too. Yeah. I wouldn't just say that when you know, so many times people vote on things, they don't know what's contained in it and everything. So I don't know the full, the gist of the, uh, you know, Affordable Care Act. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, well, I wanted to talk about another issue here, and then we're going to talk about some of the bills that are going to be coming your way. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, State Treasurer Loftus. Yes. Uh -huh. He refuses to uh, sign the check for a $50 million investment until he gets a letter from saying that this is legit rather than just an email and there's been a whole lot of news all across the state and everything what do you think about this Floyd? I think it's a sign of check for a payment to an investment firm you know for their cost and everything and he said he just want a paper statement agreement you know before he signs you know not just an email and I don't see anything wrong with that I think we all need backup everybody rely upon emails now and everything but I think you need a something of this importance of that magnitude I don't see anything wrong with one a paper copy of the agreement they have in writing in sure. black and white before he issues that you know I, I don't either I'm not really sure I understand there has to be some other some other th subplot here that <laughs> Right. Because on the surface, it just makes, to me, good business sense. I think it does, too. You know, and we are talking about the money for retirees and everything, you know, yes. and he's responsible for that, you know. So I don't see anything wrong with saying, hey, I need a paper copy in black and white of our agreement here before I issue the check of $50 million that we are paying your company, you know, to count our <laughs> funds. Exactly. So, uh, but, uh, and, and you know, they're saying it was an email, but in truth, how do we know the email was signed by the person that it's supposed to be signed by, correct? Exactly, you know. We don't. So, because quite often, employees or underlings do it per what the boss says. That's right. So, yeah. why not have it absolutely in writing? Mm -hmm. um, Okay, well, we've had a couple of questions come in on the Medicaid, and mm -hmm. maybe we can answer, maybe we cannot. Medicaid is not our tax dollars at work. It is uh, borrowed from China and other countries. Is that true, Floyd? Or do you know the answer? You <laughs> no, may not I don't know. I don't know. I know Medicaid is a federal program funded right. by the federal government. And where the money comes from, I know we all pay taxes, some of that tax money might be going to fund Medicaid, but I'm not sure. Exactly. Not in Washington. All right, and Fred Armfield on the Medicaid. After five years, the state should be able to figure out where to get the money. Okay, I agree. Like you said, five years, you know, we don't know the status of our state, you know, and everything, the cost and everything. So I'm saying, you know, five years, you that'll give me ample time, you know, to, to start planning for what's going to happen. You know, you have to plan down the road. And when you know something's going to happen, you just start planning then, you know, looking at ways of funding it when you get to that point. Sure, exactly. All right, well, just uh, some questions coming in on that issue. Medicaid, health care is a, uh, it's a hot topic for everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. of course, uh, a lot of individuals, in fact, we've already seen this in some of the, their individual health care bills are already starting to go up in anticipation of of uh, the uh, health care mandate, so mm -hmm. we'll see what else is going on on that. 
Now, here's another one. Now, I don't know if you were, if you are actually working on this, but I'm sure you know something about it. How about the fact that uh, they have passed a, um, that you don't need to have a concealed weapon permit? I mean, what is going on here, Floyd? First, we're going to have uh, whether you can actually do it in the, to, for alcohol to, in a restaurant, and now they're saying, hey, let's just do away with concealed weapon permits? Yes, yes. You know, I was watching a Western the other day on TV, one of the old Westerns, and you know, they just said, yeah, guns on the side in the holster, so right. let's go back to that day and just have shootouts and everything, you know. The wild, was, wild west. Wild, wild west, that's right. Right you know, here so, in South Carolina. Yeah, so I think, you know, I think people just gone too far with this gun legislation and everything, you know. And really, uh, carrying a gun, is that going to protect you? Well, it, it, you know, I... It, it, I can bring up several stories that maybe it could where a sheriff up there in Ohio or something told people, you better start carrying your own guns because we've had to cut back the sheriff's department so much that we can't defend you. Defend you. And what about the people uh, where you have a home invasion and you can't get 911, you know, 911 right there for you? Yeah, I understand that. You know, uh, I was just listening this morning what they say it is district attorney out in Texas, him and his wife was killed yes. in their home. In their home. Yeah. yeah. People been invaded with assault weapons and everything. You and know. they're trying to figure out if that's related to, to the other, other assistant a couple of months ago that were killed and everything. And they said they think it might be a white supremacist group, but they don't know and everything. But sure. this gun issue <clears throat> really has just gotten crazy. <clears throat> it really has, has, you know. And I can see people with concealed weapon now saying you don't have to have a concealed weapon, just go get a gun, just carry it. You know, and I think a lot of times, a, a lot of people would not be in prison if they had not had guns, that they would think twice. You know, I know several people, you know, you get upset and everything, you know. Let emotion take over. That's there. right. You let emotions take over and then they're remorseful and they got to live with that the rest of their lives. So I just think it's crazy to think about Everybody just carry a gun. Well, how about wild, this? Wild West. West. Wild, wild West. Well, you know, it wasn't long ago that you, uh, that down there that they were, the Senate actually, was talking about the uh, law where you, if you had a concealed weapon permit, you could carry it in a restaurant. Yes. You can carry it in a restaurant if the restaurant are out, but you cannot consume alcohol while you're in there. And I did not vote for that bill because, you know, who's going to be watching? <laughs> That's what I want to know. To see if you're drunk. And then if you carry it in there, what if somebody who is drinking, you know, sort of agitates you? Do you have the authority to take matters in your own hand then? I think both of them are just crazy. You know, I don't think you need to have, you know, people taking guns into restaurants. We don't need that. We don't need that, you know, and everything, so. Well, it, it certainly is. But what do you feel about the right to bear arms? I mean, that is our Second Amendment right. I have no problem with you having the right to bear arms. I have no problem against people having guns to go hunting, to do whatever they want to. I don't have any problems with anybody having the right to bear arms. But I think there should be limitations, you know, on where you carry and do things of that nature. And another thing I think, you know, like if you have to conceal weapon, the training, it's important that you have training because I think safety is one important thing in knowing how to operate a weapon in a proper way. You know, a few weeks ago I heard about the fellow down in 96, a group from Florida was here hunting, you know, and fellow got killed down there. Right. You know, I think there are certain courses you need. I remember when I was in school, uh, Assistant Principal at NASA, we had gun safety when it was a junior high school for ninth graders to take. You know, so I have nothing, but I think it's training that go along with having a weapon. It's the training that you need to have so that you know how to operate and store that weapon. How many times you hear about little kids getting killed because they found the weapon, it was not, you know, on lock or anything, and they're killed. So I think there's proper training that need to go along with, you know, having a weapon. And I have no problem with anybody owning a weapon, you know, but they are saying guidelines I think they need to follow. When we come back, we're going to talk more about a lot of different issues. Sir, hope you're going to stay with us right, time, right now. It is time for South Carolina News. Give us a call if you got a question, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Uh, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? 
or a college tuition hung on a wall, or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box. Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, that's right. We're right back here. Sharp Facets Gallery. I am here with the incomparable Floyd, Senator Floyd Nicholson. And, of course, uh, coming up will be uh, discussions about the budget coming up, and they have uh, all kinds of issues there. But I want to go back to uh, what we were talking about with uh, gun control or gun safety, whichever, however you want to talk about it. You know, you and I were just discussing that we don't seem to address what aspect of it? Peace. Peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, how can we live peacefully, you know, because... Uh, you know, you talk about all the things, oh, for safety and everything, but what about the discussion to see how we can just be peacefully and live as a nation, as a community, as a state, in a peaceful mean, learn how to get along and learn to be tolerant. Although we are different, let's learn how to tolerate each other in a peaceful way. Sure. Not just thinking about violence, you know, to end, because a lot of people think the only way to resolve things is not to shoot and kill. You no, know, years ago when I was growing up, you had a disagreement. You got out there with a fist fight, and you fought it out. Then you were back buddies. Yeah. But now, when there's a disagreement, you think you have to have the gun and shoot and kill to eliminate a life. When you're really eliminating two, because the one that is killed, and then the one that did the killing is going to be incarcerated for the rest of his life. Yeah. yeah. And that's a burden upon us to pay for him being or her being incarcerated. And, you know, because we have to pay for that. Yes, we do. So, you know, if we could work on ways, you know, to eliminate all of the violence, work against that, work for peace, that would help our economy and everything because, you know, it costs a lot of money to operate prisons. Sure. It's uh, one of the biggest. In fact, I think Governor Haley, Gracie Lee Floyd alum, she wants to share your, her ball. <laughs> okay, I see Grace. Grace, go lay down. Um, she want. Uh, Governor Haley, in fact, I think just added more money to the budget for the prisons mm -hmm. because of the um, the need to be able to have the people that are protected, mm -hmm. protecting, protected. Right. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. There uh -huh. have been some issues about what they've had down there. But, you know, one of the big conversations out there on a federal level is a national database with uh, gun, gun uh, approvals for everybody, whether you're giving your gun to your daughter or your son, if whether it's a family hand-me-down, or what do you think about all that, Floyd? I think that's great, but still, is that going to solve the problem? Well, will you know, it work? Uh, <laughs> that's a good problem. <clears throat> you know, I think that's one thing you really need to think about. When you enact laws, how are we going to be able to 100% enforce this? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest things, you know. Enforcement. I think about when we were talking about uh, Texas, you know, banning Texas. It might have a psychological effect, say, I shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. But can you really enforce? Are you going to have a law and officer looking when it's up? Or they were texting? Right. Or were they on the cell phone? Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's an enforcement. So it's a big issue, though. Know, how are we going to be able to enforce this if we pass this law? Sure. I think I, I think there's a whole lot of uh, discussion there. I think awareness is a good thing. I think it's interesting that so many people on the national level really never had uh, Jamie Wilson on their radar. But today, whenever anything happens, it's immediate. And you know, I lay that at the internet, 24-hour news. Our whole society has changed in our desire to know all these things and have massive news crews and exposure and all this kind of stuff. Yes. It is changing because every time you have a mass, you can come up, you pick up and you go back to Jamie Wilson in <laughs> 1987 or 88, first thing. But you know, before all these mass hit, you didn't hear hardly anything about it, you know, and everything. Right. So it's a national issue now, and it's all about the media and exposure and everything, you know. And like I said, the internet, uh, I don't go on there and read all that stuff on the internet, Facebook, and all that stuff. I don't have one. Well, plus all the ways to. Um, look at the guy out there in uh, Colorado with the movie theaters. He was buying stuff over the internet. I mean, the internet has 
changed our society. You know, it used to be a lovely day in the neighborhood right here in Greenwood. It still is yeah. lovely, yeah. But, but a lot more. You have access to anything you want to get off the Internet. Right. And who's going to check it? Nobody. <laughs> you know, you're buying stuff to make bombs off the Internet. Right. And those people, they just want to sell it. They don't care who they sell it. They're not running a background check to see, can I say you this or sure. you know, and everything. It's... So the Internet, I think, is one of the things. Al Gore, you changed our society forever when you flipped that switch. I say this quite often. I still believe it. Yeah. I mean, it's great. The Internet is fabulous. When it's used in the right way. Exactly. When it's used in the right way. But it is abused in so many instances, people. Because a lot of these things, they can't just go into a store and buy. Sure. You know, but I can get it off the Internet. Yes, exactly. You know, so it has changed our world dramatically. Yes. So, what do you do? You have any idea what the answer is on this, Floyd? What is your position? I mean, what do you think would be the answer? Because everybody's got a different point of view, and everybody's got a different answer to how this should all be worked out. Now, I'll, how what should be worked out? Whether we should have with the gun control, massive uh, checks. What do we do about uh, m mentally ill people? Uh, what do we do about the whole situation? You know, that's a good. <laughs> That's, That's a, a big very question, Ann. <laughs> big question. Yeah. You know, when you think about mentally ill, you know, it, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, all of us might be mentally ill to a certain extent. Well, I think one of the biggest things to me is even if you don't sell a gun to a mentally ill person, they still can get access, and that to me is the biggest question. And the whole thing, I don't care what laws you pass or what background checks you have, if you want to get a gun, you can get a gun. You don't have to go into a dealership to get a gun. You know, there are several people, and about 90% of the people that commit crimes, they, they haven't bought these guns, you know. Right. Stuff. They have gotten them illegally. And how can you stop that? That's the main problem. How can you stop guns off of the black market? How can you stop individuals from just going out and getting guns? Because the people that are selling them out there, hey, they just want the money. Sure. You tell them, hey, you got a certain amount of money, I'll get you a gun. Absolutely. So, you know, they're not looking at the main thing, stopping gun sales illegally. That's right. That's the main issue. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Do you? No? It's a coffee, Grace. Asking Gracie if she wants some coffee. Hey, I'm Ann Eller right here in Sharp Facets Gallery on the 72 Bypass. Gracie is being very friendly with Floyd this morning. She thinks like she wants to share her ball. But then when you go to reach for it, she says, no, no, you cannot share my ball. <laughs> All right, hey, we're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be oh, right back. We are right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery. Uh, coffee is being drunk by all here, and we are having a good time just uh, the, the day after Easter, Easter Monday. You know, in North Carolina, I don't know if it's still that way, but in North Carolina, the Monday after was a holiday. Uh, did we ever have that as a holiday here in South Carolina or not? Do you know? I remember years ago when I was in high school, yeah. we did not get the full week vacation, you know. We got Good Friday and the Monday after. And that was it. Those were the two holidays and everything. And I was surprised my son, who's over at Presbyterian College, you know, they had their uh, spring break a few weeks ago. But this year, they got Friday and today as holidays. Wow. You know, because I remember years ago, that's what it used to be, that Good Friday and that Monday were holidays sure. and everything, you know. Absolutely. Well, good to know that uh, some people get to be off, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it not me. <laughs> not me either. Hey, Floyd, we just had a question come in. Do you... Um, do you think social media is a good mechanism to keep in touch with your constituents, the citizens? I don't use it. You don't use it? Okay. Uh, I have an open door policy, and I, I always tell people they can call me directly at home or my office or anything, and I'll come out and I'll talk to them and everything. I just like to communicate one-on-one uh, -on -one with individuals directly. Oh, God, Floyd, you're so old-fashioned, and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that means the, the world, you know, the social media, you know, I don't have a web page. I, no, I don't have a Facebook page, all of that. No. Yeah. I like direct contact. I do too. Even though I don't really pay my bills, I go in and pay them directly a lot of times. <laughs>
You have contact. It's the personal contact with people that makes the difference. I couldn't agree with you more, Floyd, and I am actually concerned about society as a whole that we may be losing that. We, we are. We really are. You know, everybody do, you know, pay bills uh, online. On, online and everything. You know, but what about the personal contact with people? I tell you a lot of time, you know, I know, you know a lot of people uh, go out to meals on wheels to deliver the meals and everything. Mm -hmm. But those people receiving the meals, that meal is not the most important thing. It's you know the most important thing is those people coming in to see them to have someone they can be in personal contact with. You know, I've done it before. A lot of times it will take you all day if you just sit down and listen to those people because they just want to talk and have a personal contact with a person. Sure. And we're losing that. We are. And, and you know, when you see people out uh, having dinner and seeing the children sitting there, or even young adults, or, you know, sitting there on their phones and they're not even communicating back and forth. Right. They're at the table, but they're not talking. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and I thought that was real nice yesterday. Uh, when we had dinner, my three sons were there. One is married, the other one had his girlfriend and a close friend. They sat at the table from about 2 o'clock to about 5 o'clock, and they were just talking, communicating, talking and laughing. And, having, and I said, a lot of times you don't see that, you know, and everything. And they were just having a wonderful time together, you know. We'd all had dinner together and everything, but just to sit down and communicate with a live body in front of you, right. not just texting and going no, on. Sure. You know? <laughs> I think you can tell a lot when you sit down and you look face to face at somebody yes. what they are, mm -hmm. what they are really thinking, and maybe what they're really saying. <laughs> exactly, it means a lot, and it really does. I do. Mm -hmm. I, I I agree with you. Now, one of the other things that has been uh, in the House that is being sent to the Senate mm -hmm. is this bill where stores should be able to start offering coupons for liquor under a, under a bill that's headed to the Senate. It did pass in the House. What do you think about um, if a, a liquor company wants to offer a coupon for a dollar off or 50 cents off or whatever? Should they have to mail it back in? That is the state law right now. You cannot walk into a liquor store and redeem a coupon. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a crazy question. It's not it, one that I had ever even thought about, but then again, I don't I don't get coupons to go buy liquor, so I mean, well, there you go. I don't either, you know, and I, I, I really don't see the difference. A coupon, it's going to be the same value. Then you might be saving that person who's uh, using a coupon 45 cents, you know, to mail it in. So what difference does it make whether it should be able to redeem it right then or the wait or what, you know? <laughs> Maybe they think, maybe they think, you know, if they have to mail it in, once they buy the uh, alcohol, they'll go and get intoxicated and then forget to mail it in and they won't have to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I think the flip side of it is, is that going to encourage somebody to go buy alcohol? For a dollar off coupon or fifty cent, most of them are that size. I don't know what would they do for alcohol. Five dollar coupons? I, you know, no I don't know. What do you get the coupon from? I've never seen uh, alcohol coupons in the paper or anything like that. So I guess it'd be on the ball when you go in the store. So you wouldn't know till you get to the store, you know, and everything, you know. So I haven't heard anything about this bill, you know, and everything. Well, it's headed your way. They're okay. going to be talking, so they're well, going to be doing that. So. Well, I'll have time to look and see then, you know, and I'll talk to. The, people around here at the stores to see how they feel about it. That's right. I'm sure they're going to believe in, if it's got a coupon and I can get it redeemed off the price of that bottle, hey, I want it. That's right. right. They still got to pay the same price then, you yeah, know, absolutely. they just get the money. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, I just thought that was a new one that had just come out, and I thought that was kind of uh, interesting. Floyd, what would you, uh, uh, one other question that I have for you, what about the mandates coming back to the to the counties, to the city, municipalities? That's been cut back, hasn't it? Oh, oh, you're talking about the eight, the subdivisions, the funds that come back from the state, you know, right, for yeah. local government? Yes. Yes, it has been cut. Last year we were able to put a little more money into it and everything, and I think in the House version this year they have the same amount as last year, and hopefully we will be able to give them additional funds because, you know, I think it just passes, but when we cut them, it's just putting a burden on the local government sure. because, you know, they don't have the other resources, so what is it going to be? Tax increase and everything, so it's just passing the buck. I think we need to step up and try to put additional funds in there for local government to aid the subdivision because, you know, when you talk to people, they don't want the services cut. Sure. The yeah. services are very important. I think they'll do a great job here in Greenwood. But we need to make sure that on the state level, we try to fund in a level that's going to be 
compatible or help them to provide the services that they are providing here. Well, if I remember correctly, this again is tax dollars that were collected here that were sent to the to state. The state, and they need to come back to the community. Right. A lot of times they sit there and they know we're going to divert it to other things, you know, and everything. So I think we need to support local governments and their funds, you know, because they have a big responsibility in providing top-notch services and everything. I just think, you know, a couple Why years Why do we ago, have to send it to begin with? That would be my question. I'm not with the tax. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm just saying. I understand. Yeah. You know, just think, yeah, locally, just think, you know, uh, I think my last year's mayor, we built a new substation over there, you know, off of, uh, was it 225? Mm -hmm. you right. know, And then a couple of years ago, they had to close, close it, it because of funding. But luckily now, they have reopened that and everything, you know, but because that's so important because, you know, uh, Fire safety is so important, you know, the response time and everything. You never know until it's your house. Sure. You know, and everything. Oh, we can cut that. But I was glad to see that because, you know, when you think about services being cut that are so important, especially when you think about ambulance and fire service, time is of essence. Sure. How quick they can respond. So I think it's important that we be able to send back to the counties and municipalities as much funds as possible to assess them in providing the services that they provide. Exactly. Now, we've only got a few minutes left here, Floyd, but what other issues would do you think our listeners should know about, things that are on the radar that are coming up? Huh, things on the radar that are well, coming up. Well, the budget, up. I know, is coming up. Okay, right? one thing we've been talking about is early voting. Yes. You know, uh, we passed the voter ID bill and everything, but we did not include early voting in there. And this should be a no-voter, a no-brainer, you know, early voting. Allow people to go in and vote early. You know, we're doing it now. It's called absentee voting, right? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. What's and the difference between the two? Exactly. The only thing you have to go in there and say, hey, I'm going to be working. Right. Can I vote early? Right. Go in and tell the story, you know, to be able to vote. And the whole thing is we want as many people as possible to participate in the election process. I remember years ago, every time after the election, you know what the headline was? What? Too much voter apathy. Right. We only had 25 or 30 percent of the people, you know, voted in this election. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we got a great participation. So we got too many people to participate now. Now we need to change the rules. But I think, you know, we ought to have early voting allowed where you can go in and just say, hey, I want to vote. Especially when you have senior citizens, you know, who don't want to stay in those long lines or people with handicapped conditions and everything. Why not they be able to just go in and cast their ballot early? You know. Well, haven't they? Uh, there is a version of the bill around, I do believe, that lets it vote up till Saturday or the yes, weekend uh -huh. before. The weekend before, you know, they can get everything right for the right. election and everything. Right. But, you know, there are some individuals uh, coming up with all kind of amendments to go on and, and say, you know, you need a different type of ID to vote early. You know, and I think it's just sort of voter suppression. They don't want people to participate in the process. Now, you know, I was against vote ID, but it has passed. Right. I'm just like strong thumb and now do everything we can to make sure everybody have the proper ID to vote now. It is passed, it's beyond, it's no need to cut, keep fighting that battle now, it's over. So what I do now is encourage people, okay, you need to start early now, making sure you have the proper identification to be able to vote in the next election. You know? I can't believe that anybody couldn't get, even if they didn't have the proper um, ID requirements that they couldn't get it between now and another yeah, election exactly. coming up. But the only thing is, you know, I know uh, when we were talking about this, I came home one weekend, it was a lady, 80 years old, she called me and she was like, Mr. Nick, I heard about this. And he said, I went to get my voter ID. Mm -hmm. So she went down to DMV and they told her, say, you need to have a birth certificate. This is lady, she went back, went back to the health department to check. Couldn't, couldn't get her one. Couldn't get her one because she was born with a midwife. And he said, oh, well, these papers, you need to take these attorney and get them filled out. You know, or older people are going to be running back and forth to do that when they had access to do it. But I think they got that worked out now. Sure. That yeah. sounds great. Um, any Anything else that you think we should talk about? Um, some of the uh, things with the uh, corrections department, uh, that's been a big issue. They have issued more money there because when they were down in Bishopville and found that they didn't even have cameras and some of the stuff that are protecting protecting the people that are working there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Frightening, isn't it? Uh, it? It's very frightening. One thing I think they're trying to come up with ways, you know, 
the less violent offenders, you know, see if they can work out some type of way as far as not having them being in prison, if there's some other type of way, you know, can have those, you know, because, you know, a lot of people in there are, uh, you know, offenses that are not very violent. Mm -hmm. Now, the violent offenses, violent offenders, they need to be incarcerated. Right. And we need to do everything we can, but we need to work on some of these uh, individuals, you know, that are less violent, some other programs instead of incarceration for those. Sure. Well, you know, I couldn't agree with you more on that. I guess an ankle bracelet that'll never come off, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right. right. Well, yeah. we we have been talking about some of the things. How do you feel about what you've heard about how the budget is coming together? Going to be a big fight down there, or what do you think? I don't think it'll be a big fight. You know, one of the main things, you know, we hear so much talk about our infrastructure, and this is something that we're going to have to address. Yes. Our roads and bridges are in terrible condition. They are. And if we are looking at economic development for our state and everything, we're going to have to address this issue, you know, of correcting our roads and bridges because one of the main things, uh, main, main means of transportation use is trucking. Right. You know, over the roads and everything, you know, and our bridges, we're going to have to come up with funds to repair these. You know, we just can't continue to talk about it. we got to have start having funding. And if we don't, they're just going to get in worse conditions and everything, you know. So I think, you know, a lot of times think of additional money. We're going to have to start putting money aside, you know, to start repairing these individuals because, you know, but, you know oh, we can't get our goods in and out. That's right. condition of your roads. Hey, you're listening to WCRS right here in Greenwood, South Carolina. I have uh, Senator Floyd Nicholson with us. You know, speaking of that, Floyd, how about uh, there was a big discussion about gas tax, increasing the gas tax. We have one of the lowest gas taxes in the United States. What do you think about that? Governor Haley said absolutely not. What do you think? You know, a lot of people said no. 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 New taxes, additional right. taxes, you know. But that's not a free ride. That's not a free ride. And eventually we're going to have to look at the gas tax, you know. I have to buy gas and, you know, I know the price are high. But we're going to have to look at this, you know, as ways of generating funds to help our roads and bridges, you know. Let's just bite the bullet because we're going to have to look at We cannot continue to have that low. It's no free ride. I don't want it. But still, let's be... Let's be logical about the situation. Responsible? Very responsible. <laughs> exactly. And seeing, you know, what means we need to employ to generate funds to help with our roads and bridges. Sure, absolutely. Well, we have been here with Senator Floyd Nicholson. As always, it is a pleasure to have you on the air. Glad you could take the time and sit down and talk to me. And, you know, I always take the time. I enjoy coming over and being on your radio show. And I just want to say, like always, I thank you for the voice you provide here in our community, and I just thank you all for the great job you do here at the radio station of keeping the local community informed, because that's what it's all about, getting the information out to the citizens and letting them make the choices they want to make about things happening in the community, and you do an excellent job at that, and I just say thank you for inviting me, and I enjoyed being with you, and continue to do the great job that you're doing here in our community. Thank you very much, Floyd. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Bye-bye, everybody. Be back this afternoon with a replay on this, Floyd. You're going to be on the radio again this afternoon. How about that? For those that missed it this morning, you can hear it this afternoon. Two for one. Two for one. There you go, Floyd. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody.